Hey guys, this is Colin Titanstone here, and uh, as you probably noticed, I'm talking in this video, which is something I've never done before. Typically, I just add music into my videos, and uh, you probably know what type of music I like uh, based on the videos that you've watched. Uh, but uh, what I'm doing in this video is I have a lot of friends who have asked me to uh, try to start talking in my videos, mainly to explain to them. Uh, so some of the things that I do, maybe help them out a little bit. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, hopefully if you're new to balance, if you're still trying to figure out how balance works, maybe you're trying to just learn, maybe you're just trying to learn PvP in general, and uh, hopefully uh, watching uh, this upcoming series of videos is going to help you uh, learn more, uh, maybe how to play. And if you're already experienced, uh, uh, many of you are much more experienced at balance than I am, and then in that case, you'll just get to have a good laugh at some of the mistakes that you're going to see me make here. So, uh, let's go ahead, and I'm going to, in this video, I'm just going to uh, show you my build, show you my deck, um, kind of explain a little bit about what I'm going to be doing, and I'm just going to have some fun. So, what you see right here, my rank is at zero. Obviously, that's a little, little bit crazy. Um, Probably some people are gonna be a little, uh, get a little disappointed uh, having to fight me at first at that rank. That th they don't have a chance of winning. But uh, the reason why I went down this low, obviously, I was at sixteen sixty nine rank before. Uh, but at that rank, I hardly anyone one v ones at that rank anymore. I was pulling from a really really small pool of opponents, facing the same few guys over and over again. It was getting a little bit boring. But also, uh, with Chrysalis, some of the new changes to PvP, um, especially uh, Shadow Magic, which is introduced with Chrysalis, has completely changed the way PvP works in many areas. Uh, in my opinion, all the new Shadow Magic is actually useless in 1v1 except for Shadow Shrike, and that's, that's what I'm talking about in 1v1 when I reference Shadow Magic, I'm talking about Shadow Shrike. You know, with 50% Pierce, that completely el eliminates Jade, at least it should eliminate Jade at, at any rank. Uh, but at that rank, as in 1v1, no one uses Jade anymore. So that, that no one really had any use for Shadow Shrike uh, at that level. So uh, I, I ranked all the way down, all the way down to zero. See if it's a little more interesting th down here. And uh, basically, what I'm going to be doing for the next. Uh, upcoming video it says uh, ranking all the way back up again, uh, and during that time, uh, you'll get to uh, see what it's like PvP. And I'm gonna be trying to get an idea of how things are different down at the lower ranks because I haven't been down this low in a long time. Also, I'm also trying to get just a better idea of how to use Shadow Shrike against people who actually carry a lot of resist because I haven't faced uh, someone who wears Jade in a 1v1. Um, in ranked for a long time, um, probably not since, not for several months. Uh, so I mean, the thing is, at that rank, pretty much everyone who wears Jade uh, is at around rank thirteen hundred and below. Once you start getting higher, pretty much everyone is using high damage builds, and you don't really need Shadow Strike at that anymore. So that that's what my rank is, that's what it is. Let me go ahead and uh show you my stats. So I'm going for a high damage, um still some fairly solid resist, a little bit less than I'm used to carrying, but uh still good enough. Um my accuracy, this is like the weak point in my build, so this would be the Achilles heel of my setup right here. I often fizzle some fairly important spells. So uh, you'll see I try and counter that as much as possible just by keeping infallible up whenever I can. That helps a lot, obviously. Whenever it's not up, it can cause some problems. Uh, my critical rating, I, I build, I do not build for critical. So I, I not a single piece of gear that I use. Uh, I was was chosen for its critical rating. Uh, the 340 that I get right now is rather low compared to what most other wizards like to carry at the higher ranks. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's there. It's just a result of some other of other stats that I built for. And because it is so high, I critical a lot of my heals, and that's why you see why my heal boost is so low. I don't really need heal boost anymore. 
but I try not and rely up upon critical rating. I, I actually try and get a much higher block uh, than uh, people normally carry. And the reason is I like to try and take the lucky elements out of the game as much as possible and try and uh, distill the elements of who's going to win down to uh, really predictable things like damage, resist, uh, piercing, stuff like that. So that's also one reason. So that's why I like high block. That's also one reason why I used to like to play with a lot higher pips than I do now. In fact, I used to play with a hundred percent pips or ninety-eight percent power pips, depending on whether I would use the Sid staff or one of the other wands that gave a lot of pips. Uh, now I don't. I don't use a wand that gives pips anymore, so it's a little bit lower. I'm gonna get have a little bit of luck right there, but uh, still high enough that it works in most cases. And then finally, armor piercing. And armor piercing is really important. It's much more important than most people give it credit for, for a couple reasons. One thing is, and I'll let you guys do the math if you're really interested in seeing how this works, uh, but armor piercing and against when you're facing a standard build, one point of pierce is actually worth two points of damage. So 16% piercing right here would be the equivalent of having another 32% damage. Uh, but that's not it. Uh, obviously, when you're facing someone with no resist, that number drops way down uh, to being less than worthless. I mean, someone with zero resist, which is not uncommon with the new Storm builds, is worthless. But that uh, also, that number goes way up when you're facing someone with immunity. So if you are facing someone with like a hundred and... Like, a three resist is, is that's an example. One person who I faced recently had one hundred and three percent balance resist, and sixteen percent piercing is worth a whole lot more than thirty two percent damage right there. So it's it's really valuable. I even li used to like to play with even more piercing than I have now, and if I know that I'm playing against uh, a turtle, so a jade, I uh, wear even more resist, um, even more piercing than I have right now but this is just kind of a standard build. Let me go ahead and show you the gear that I've used to get this build, and then I'll show you my deck, and that'll be this video. So, uh, in this build right here, I used the Hades Helm of Justice along with the Hades Raiment of Justice. Uh, two matching pieces there. Uh, I like them both because they're really balanced pieces. They, they don't go insane in any one stat, but they just have a, have a a solid amount from every of every single stat here. Um, you know, heal boost, damage, critical, resist, block, piercing, power pips, and a health. The, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the only downside to these pieces is they lack uh, accuracy. And accuracy, that's kind of the weak point to my build. Uh, the boots are actually slightly different that I don't don't I'm not using the matching boost that set because the I really need high block. I mentioned why earlier. So these are kind of like the high block boots. I got them just for the block, but they do have some good resist and, and a bit of accuracy, which is nice. Um the wand. There are some higher block wands out there. Uh so there's one wand from uh, I think the Shaman's Lore Pack, which gives 150 block and 25 critical, which I would love that. The downside, though, is as I mentioned, I explained why uh, shield piercing is so valuable, or armor piercing is so valuable to me, and uh, that's really why I picked this one because it has a really solid combination of block and armor piercing. And I mean, hey, the critical's nice. It's there. I'll take advantage of it. But I'm really not building for it or relying upon it. So that's this wand. Um, sadly, the cards it gives aren't that helpful. I've never even used the blinding light card that it gives. I've I used a tower shield once in a while. The downside, though, is that it is a 55% item card, so it doesn't stack with anything else. So, uh... You know, did, oh, excuse me, it does stack with other shields. So if I have a normal tower shield up, and then I use this one, they stack, and someone can take them both off in one hit. So it's useful only in, circum only in certain circumstances. Excuse me, I'm messing up a lot of words today. Uh, the theme that I use, the Blade of the Felled Titan, 
uh, one of the best ones out there. Uh, before that was out, I used to use another high damage one. Which one was it? It was the uh, Storm Cayman's Cruel Fang from Azteca. Obviously, as soon as the Blade of the Feld Titan came out, though, everyone upgraded to that. Some people still love the Duelist's Failed Razor, which is the Arena Ticket uh, uh, theme. The reason why I don't like it is... Uh, you give up a lot of other stats, especially power pips, but also a bit of damage, a little bit of heal boost uh, for, more, for more critical. And since I'm not going with a critical build, uh, that extra 5% critical which you get from, from this is not worth it. So, um, actually I'm, I'm not even sure if that's 5%, that might, be on, that might only be 4% critical. But uh, it's just that's not worth it to, uh, for the extra power pips. I much prefer having higher power pip chance. So I go with the Blade of the Filled Titan. Also, it gives more damage. And uh, also, along with that is the ring. Uh, I like the Duelist, Duelist Daredevil ring mainly for the Pierce. You know, Pierce is, is everything when you have so, when you're facing someone with solid resist. Uh, there's no other ring that gives this much pierce. I don't think I'm not even sure if there is any other ring out there that gives any pierce. So it's really helpful. Also has good pips, block, and universal damage, which isn't really helpful, but it is what it is. That's the ring. If you don't have the, the tickets for that, definitely go ahead and use the Alpha and Omega ring, which is just like it except you don't have the pierce. Um other than that Oh, I don't think I mentioned the amulet I used. I used this amulet uh, just so I can use Doom and Gloom. And I'll talk about that when I discuss my deck in a little bit more detail. Uh, I would normally use a Deathmaster amulet, but I got this one as an accidental drop from Hades while I was farming him for his gear. So, you know, whatever. I can use the extra drop. I can use the extra block. Uh, you know, it's helpful. Uh, might as well take advantage of that. Uh, let's see a couple more things. The pet that I use, I really, really like this pet a lot. I wish this, uh, this one failed. I wish I got in Spell Defy instead of Critical Striker. Other than that, though, I re the reason why I like this pet so much is because since I do like to take the lucky elements out of the matches, uh, it's, I often have uh, don't like to rely upon the May cast talents. That they'll cast at the wrong times. They cast. And I don't really need them. And oftentimes, yeah, they can help a lot. I mean, you know, when you when you're fortunate enough to get a pet that spams fairy, and I have n I have not gotten one of those yet. All my fairy pets have a pretty low cast rate. Um, so I, I prefer to have uh, the pets that you do, that don't have may casts. So. And this side just has some really solid stats that are there for me every single turn, no matter what. This is just a pretty helpful stat uh, pet. Obviously, the card is not that great. I would actually prefer a rain beetle or some other pet with a useful card. Maybe a dread grimoire with a um, empower that can come in helpful sometimes. Um, obviously, this is not a useful pet card, myth trap. But again. I'm not a pet guy. I don't have a lot of good pets, as you can see. You've probably seen some other videos. So I'm just using what I have. Uh, the deck here, uh, my PVP deck. The reason why I picked this deck, this has dropped from quite a few bosses and uh, chrysalis, is I picked it for the damage. Okay, get an extra one percent damage. Uh, I prefer that over like two percent heal boost, which is the alternative. So that's why I like that deck. Also, I get one more space in my side deck, which is kind of cool, too. So let me go ahead and show you what's in that deck. Uh, this is the main deck. I carry one stun block, which I rarely ever use. It's basically there just in case I get those myth guys who like to combo Medusa and stuff like that. Um, one thing that has changed recently in my deck is the number of tower shields that I carry. Uh, typically, I would only carry three tower shields, and I just uh, shuffle through my deck really fast, uh, multiply them with cloak, build them up pretty quickly, along with the other shields that I would carry, elemental and uh, spirit shields, and weaknesses. Oops, I took one out by accident. Uh, but what's happened as the as the speed of the, the way the games are played has increased with the Hades update, especially with new, new Hades gear. I find I really need to have a lot of towers accessible really early on in the game, even before the first ex 
first ever shuffle. This is especially true with the Storm Wizards that come in now with their really high critical, high damage builds, and they'll come in and just spam Bolt and win or lose within 10 turns. And that's really crucial to be able to pull uh, these tower shields almost every turn if I need to be able to. Uh, so just just having that many tower shields, I max them out. I still have Cloak here for the longer matches to help uh, build my deck. Um, I don't know. Uh, six Cloak is probably going to turn out to be too many. But no, I'll, I'll end up adjusting that as I start ranking back up from zero again. Uh, so I have six Colossal here. That's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, don't need to say anything about that really. You know, 275 free damage per hit. You know, who's going to complain about that? Infallibles. I have four infallibles that might actually not be enough, uh, but I'm gonna uh, stick with that. I had to take out some stuff to make room for uh, a couple of shadow shrikes. But uh, basically, my goal is to what I like to do because I have such low precision is I try and uh, keep infallible up as much as possible. Uh, Doom and gloom. This is again this is another, another leftover from uh, the high healing base. Uh, but it's actually still fairly useful now because even though I'm I, I, I'm not really facing Jade Wizards with really high heal boost anymore, I'm also seeing a lot more people with really high critical who are constantly criticaling their heals. So you know, as, you know, Life Wizards, uh, Death Wizards, Storm and Balance can all critical their own heals with with their native critical uh, boosts, and so just having a Doom up to help counter that is really helpful. And that's the whole reason why I use the Death Mastery Amulet. That's just for that, no other reason really. Uh, one Faint. I don't really use Faint a whole lot, but it can be helpful against high resist, especially Jades, if I need to spike a lot of damage. Um, infections. Uh, you know, self explanatory really. Uh, obviously, I'll talk more in depth about different ways to use infection in future videos. Uh, availing hands. This is one thing that has changed. I used to actually carry fewer availing hands in my deck, typically only three or four, and I'd multiply them along with my other cards using, at first, uh, before as Tekka, I would use uh, Keen Eyes to multiply them. Um, and then, as soon as, as Tekka came out, obviously Primordial became a much better alternative. But again, because because the way the meta of the game has this sped up, people are putting out a lot more damage. I really need to be able to find uh, my heal spells really fast. I need them even during the first shuffle. Three or four isn't enough, so I have six in. Uh, that's that's just why I've one way in which uh, the new stuff has really changed the way the game is played. Uh, one other thing here, judgment. Uh, not a, I don't really use this judgment a whole lot, but it's there for longer games. King Artorias. Looks like a really cool spell. Haven't really had a chance to use it a whole lot. Let's get some news. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how I can get this to play into uh, different uh, kill sequences. Uh, I'm not really sure yet. I'm kind of disappointed with what King's Isle did here. Uh, they give it 725 damage, which is the same amount of damage that Ice gets on their spell. So, uh, definitely rather sad there, but I am uh, I think the negative 40% uh, weakness debuff is a f fairly cool addition, and we'll just see how that works out. Uh, Lore Master, this is a really cool spell. If, you, if you're balanced and you do not have Lore Master, uh, all I can say is it's worth every hour you spend, and you'll be spending a lot of hours unless you get lucky, but it's worth every sp every hour you spend farming for it. It's completely worth it, so definitely go ahead and get it. Uh, its main use is actually not so much for damage, although it's a really high damage spell, but its main use is actually for uh, uh, the double debuff that it puts on a 20% weakness and a negative 35% accuracy uh, reduction is just insane. Um, it can be super helpful. Often save your life. Get by that one extra turn you need, especially if you're going second and hit for hit. They're just out hitting you, especially since you can't uh, get any towers up against the small hits, and they can always tower if, if they think you're going to do a big hit. So hit for hit, they're just winning against you. Then Lord Master can be that extra turn. It can buy you, you know, two or three fizzles throughout the game, and that can just put you ahead far enough to be able to uh, uh, win the match. Um, obviously, I don't like those kinds of matches where you're going hit for hit the whole game. 
but if you're against someone with really, really high damage, that's the only way to win. Uh, let's see, Mana Burn. Uh, Mana Burn is one of those spells. I have six in my deck, and the reason is not because I use it a lot. I don't. I hardly ever use it. But the reason why I have so many in my deck is because it's one of those spells where it's only useful if you can get it on the exact right turn for whatever circumstances they're in. And if you can't pull it on the exact right turn, it's just not that helpful. So I have too many in so that I can pull it fairly quickly whenever I need it. Uh, but in most cases, it just ends up getting discarded. Uh, minions, uh, very situational. They can be really, really helpful uh, if you're against a, uh, an opponent who doesn't have a ton of damage. But if you're against someone with either really high damage or... Um, Someone who ha uses a lot of AOE spells, such as, you know, Sandstorm, Frog, a Meteor, Tempest, uh, you know, whatever else. And not quite so helpful. Basically, you waste your pips, and they still use their pips to hit you and kill your minion. Um, but if, it, if they just use single hit spells, uh, a a minions are pretty good. Not so much because they let a the minion live, in most cases they don't. But because you can use the minion uh, to distract them for a turn. And so, other than that, let's see, I carry scorpions. Only two scorpions, less than I used to carry. But because I'm carrying two lore masters, uh, that has kind of replaced scorpion in many ways for me. Uh, I kind of explained my shields already. I carry only one supernova in my main deck, and you'll see why when I get to my side deck. Uh, I carry three weaknesses. Weaknesses, that's one of those great uh, when in doubt debuff spells. So if, if, if you have a turn, you're not sure what to do. Maybe you're waiting for them to, to make the next play in the game. And you're just kind of sitting there. Throw a weakness. It's one in doubt. Throw a weakness. It's a really useful spell. And then Shadow Strike. This is a spell I've never really gotten a chance to use before. Outside of, you know, just testing it. And so I really have no clue yet whether two is going to be too many or maybe too few or what. So I'm going to find out as I start uh, ranking up whether uh, two Shadow Strikes is the right number. Obviously I had to take out some Infallibles and uh, uh, just to make room. I think I took out one Infallible and one of something else to make room for a couple of Shadow Strikes. Uh, so we'll, we're just going to see how that works. So that's the main deck and let me get to the side deck now. Uh, Emolet is, uh, this is a funny carryover from back when you used to see a lot of Fire Wizards who used Jade and their strategy uh, and you probably noticed already, uh, they just they love their uh, backdraft backdraft traps. Uh, so they just stack backdraft. Once that sticker came out, they would stack their um, uh, their potent trap. What is it, is it called? Yeah, potent trap backdrafts. Um, and there's a bunch of other traps. And Immolit would just often know the way to get rid of that, clear that all out. So, hardly ever use it. I was at high ranks, so you never use it. But around rank 900 to 1100, I'd see a lot of those people. And that's what I'd use this for. It bought me a little bit of extra time to kill them. Sacrifice the exact same reason, but against people who use feints instead of backdraft. And everything else is pretty much self explanatory. I uh, hit some my side deck to get them fast when I need them. Um, I like enchanting supernova with. Unstoppable instead of gargantuan like I do with my other hits, and the reason is because of the precision. It's really, it's really, really not nice to waste a turn on a fizzle. And considering how low the accuracy is here, and I don't really get anything uh, from my gear in terms of precision, so just having unstoppable, enchanting it with unstoppable, uh, brings the accuracy way up, and I basically never fizzle it. Uh, so that's I uh, pretty much so that's why I just play supernovas from my, my side deck. Other than that, you may, you may be wondering why do I have eight reshuffles in my side deck? Well, obviously since King's Isle made that stupid update uh, with the reshuffle, I made them one time used for the normal card and the normal car the, the spell that you should be able to keep using. It made it a one time used card. So it kind of doesn't make sense to put one-time use cards in your main deck, which is supposed to be completely renewable. So I put them in my side deck instead. As far as why eight, well, there's a couple reasons for that. One is so that when they do come up, I can freely discard them without having to worry about maybe discarding my last one by accident. The other thing is uh, 
because sometimes uh, once in a while when I do get the J Turtles matches can go on for a while and now with Shadow Strike I don't think they're gonna go on nearly that long anymore so you're probably gonna see me reduce the number drastically but I'm gonna be starting out with 8 and just see how that works out so uh, that's my side deck uh, that's my main deck. I use some my gear, use some my build. Uh, we're going to be going into uh, doing some PvP in the next upcoming videos. But for now, I just wanted to explain uh, what I'm doing it with. Hopefully, if if uh, you guys get an idea of how I like to play my balance, and those of you who are a lot better at balance than I am, you're probably having a good laugh, and uh, that's cool. So, um, oh. In the next upcoming videos, like I said, I'm going to do some PvP. If any of you who are watching this want to see me try some different builds, I have a lot of different gear. Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've experimented a lot with different stuff. Uh, definitely not the master at it, but I just have fun experimenting. So if you want to see me try like a different type of build, maybe different strategies, go ahead and post it in the comment. And I, and if, if it, in the comments, if, if it looks interesting, uh, I'll definitely make a video about it, and we'll see how it goes. It, we can have quite some uh, amusing videos just from that alone. So, hey, th definitely looking forward to uh, future videos. Hope you guys uh, can get some enjoyment out of all this. Uh, maybe I'll see some of you in the arena. Uh, have fun.